Welcome back to Vision Miner 3D Printing News. Today we're getting into a lot of cool stuff. Everything from fully 3D printed rocket engines, we've got new materials, printing infrastructure on the moon, Navy military stuff, and a bunch of just, it, it's gonna be awesome. So, let's get started. All right, first we've got a fully 3D printed rocket engine by Skyroot Aerospace. Skyroot is an Indian startup and they've uh, they just unveiled the first cryogenic rocket engine. Uh, it's gonna power a lander model and it's expected to be used in the next few years. So additive in aerospace is huge. It's been used for quite a while now, uh, but when it comes to space exploration, it allows manufacturers to design lighter and more efficient components that could never be done before. Now, components range from nozzles to combustion chambers, but ultimately the goal is to reduce costs and make things lighter weight and make it more accessible to the point where space travel is as accessible as air travel. So over at Skyroot, the operations manager explains that this is a 100% 3D printed cryogenic engine with regenerative cooling. The fuel passes through the tubes and channels around the combustion chamber, and when heated, it flows into a special gas generator or is ejected directly into the main combustion chamber. Additive manufacturing allows the design of a complex internal structure facilitating the regenerative cooling of the engine. So they couldn't do it without 3D printing, and we couldn't do this show without you, so go ahead and smash that like button. Next, we've got Hexel launching their new conductive Hexpec material, specifically for flight-ready 3D printed components. So Hexel just launched this new material, and it's an electrically conductive polymer-based carbon fiber composite, specifically for 3D printing, and they're calling it Hexpec EM. It's been made to meet all the static electricity management, electromagnetic shielding, and radiation absorbing needs of advanced aircraft applications. Conductivity is super essential in aerospace as it enables the parts to effectively manage the electromagnetic interference and absorb radiation, especially in space. According to their vice president of additive manufacturing, it significantly reduces weight and cost while providing unlimited design flexibility. Right now, many printing materials require a conductive coating to be applied after the fact. So Hexel's new PEC material has integrated all these electromagnetic properties, which potentially makes it well-suited for a range of aerospace parts. So PEC is one of our favorite materials, as it's easy to print and it's super strong like PEAK. And we've also got more videos coming on that very soon, so be sure to check it out. And if you wanna know more, check out our store at visionminer.com. Moving right along, we've got ICON is 3D printing structures on the moon. Well, not yet, but they're getting ready to. They're working with a couple different architecture firms to get it all done, but it's crazy how much we're seeing in space applications with 3D printing and additive. ICON is an American startup specializing in advanced construction technologies, and they've announced that they've been awarded a government contract, including funding from NASA, to begin R&D on a system that would enable additive construction in space, specifically on the moon. Now, this isn't their first venture. They've actually done a lot of really cool stuff in the past, uh, from the world's first 3D printed community in Mexico to a series of homes that serve the chronically homeless in Austin, Texas. And they've also got a partnership with the US Marine Corps, which we actually talked about in a previous video, if you wanna go check that out. So, what's their new mission? specifically to make humanity a space-faring civilization. So when it comes to living in space, robust structures need to provide better thermal, radiation, and micrometeorite protection. From landing pads to habitats, there's plenty of work to be done. From Jason Ballard, the CEO, says, building humanity's first home on another world will be the most ambitious construction project in human history and will push science, engineering, technology, and architecture to literal new heights. I'll say, that's pretty awesome. Let's go to the next one. We've got a US Navy Seahawk helicopters are gonna 3D print parts for new communications gear. As part of a communications upgrade package that will be installed on over 200 Navy aircraft, they say the modification consists of three antennas, an equipment rack, and a series of electronics mounted to the rack. The 3D printed omnidirectional antenna mounts are getting a lot of attention because it's relatively new technology. The relatively light weight of the antennas being mounted to the 3D printed mounts allowed for that manufacturing process, as the mounts will not experience a significant amount of structural loads or stress, according to Tommy Stokes, a structures engineer on the H60FST. 
Well, the third antenna mount and equipment rack will be manufactured through more traditional methods. Uh, the two remaining antennas provided the development team with an opportunity to think outside of the box and explore additive manufacturing options. The U.S. military has been using 3D printing to enhance a wide range of different applications, from creating components to maintain fleets to supporting troops in the field. And it really doesn't look like they're slowing down at all. Moving right along, we've got Sandvik creating... <laughs> this is great. Uh, the world's first 3D printed smash proof guitar. Now, this is a video you've got to check out. It's, it's pretty short, but it's really, really cool. Henrik, a machining process developer at Sandvik, has played guitar since his youth. And he says, we had to design a guitar that is unsmashable in all the different ways you can smash a guitar. <laughs> he also says the engineering challenge was that the critical joint between the neck and the body that usually cracks when you smash a guitar. Yeah, who'd have thunk? So Sandvik is a leader in the metal additive manufacturing, and they decided to do this project for the body out of titanium using laser sintering. And as you might have guessed, uh, you know, they smashed it in all kinds of different ways, and they made a virtually indestructible guitar. It's a great video. You should definitely go check it out. The possibilities at this point are, are pretty much endless, uh, to the point where now there's a company selling 3D printed homes that you can buy today. Yes, that's right. A California firm is already selling 3D printed homes. The company is called Mighty Buildings, and they're based in California, but they set themselves apart from the competition in a very interesting way, specifically with their material. Most companies are using concrete-based printing materials, but Mighty Buildings uses more of a synthetic stone. The material cures almost instantly under UV light, hence the UV light panels on either side of the print head. You can purchase their dwellings right now on the website. Go check them out. This is definitely a major development. Next, we've got a really cool article with a couple different interviews and links and things about decentralized production. Now, this is one of the main benefits of 3D printing. For example, right now, China accounts for 20% of the total value of the entire manufacturing industry globally. Especially with the COVID stuff going on, I mean, every company is looking to how do we how do we you know fix our supply chain, make sure that we can get our parts on time, get our parts quickly, and hopefully close by. And heck, can we even make them ourselves? Uh, this is a huge topic, and it's really the 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 economic crisis over the last nine months has really really shown how important it can be, or how advantageous 3D printing can be when it comes to actually manufacturing. So to wrap up the day, we've got the news blitz. Let's get right into it. I've got a lot of cool stuff. So much has happened in the last two weeks that, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna run right through this one. We've got the world's first fiberglass printed boat, the Mambo, very cool stuff, check it out. Made in Space is sending the first ceramic manufacturing facility to the International Space Station. We've got the Las Vegas Raiders unveiling the world's largest 3D printed sculpture. We've got MakerBot releasing the 2020 3D printing trends report, as well as the Daily Chronicle releasing a high temp 3D printing report. We'll have a video in more detail combining these reports in a couple weeks, so stay tuned for that. A very interesting video on STL export settings that you should definitely check out. Turns out, high res isn't always the best res. Boston Microfabrication is unveiling their Micro Precision 3D printer for industrial production. Anisa Print launching their Continuous Fiber 3D Printing Package, uh, joining the forces with Desktop Metal Fiber and Markforge and a couple other companies. We've got NASA looking into large-scale 3D printing for the future of rocket engines. Nothing new, but very cool to see NASA themselves doing it. We've got Boom Supersonic unveiling the XB-1, and it's full of 3D printed parts. We've got GE using concrete 3D printing to build record tall wind turbine towers. And we've got DSM 3D printing a Rotterdam footbridge out of fiber reinforced thermoplastics. Very, very cool. All right, we've got a little bit of catching up to do on our giveaways, but on episode four, we had Jake Johnson. The Singapore University of Technology and Design just showed off their food 3D printer. It can do desserts or even other things to make them more appealing for people to take them, such as medicine, for example. Uh, so edible 3D printing, definitely very cool stuff. You're getting a free bottle of nanopolymer adhesive. And for episode five, I've got to give an honorable mention to uh, Linus Tech Project for the optimal STL export settings link. Very cool stuff. Hit us up, we'll do something special for you. But the funniest comment was definitely by Josiah Toby, and he says, Imagine being a mechanical engineer and learning that batteries, kidneys, rocket engines, and milk are being 3D printed today, and the, most, and the thing you're most excited for is an official 3D printed milk stash. 
No, it was great. Good times, good times. All right, guys, and with that, we specialize in high temp 3D printing, extremely crazy thermoplastics like Peak, Ultem, PPSU, etc. If you want to know more about the machines or the accessories that we sell, check out visionminer.com. We're here to help, and we also have a print service. Uh, but anyway, that's going to wrap up today's video. So thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video.